All right, let's go. It's almost time for late night with the word. Almost time for late. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How you guys doing? Thanks for getting on. Please like and share. We are live on Facebook and live on YouTube. Welcome, welcome. So happy to have you back, guys. Appreciate you. Just like and share the video. Good evening. Good evening. Appreciate you. Hey, twin. Hope you had a great day. Hope you have fun. Have a good time. You got to tell me about the restaurant. Who, who's great. We're almost ready to read God's word. We got one scripture. We're in Luke today. We're reading God's word for our life. Ready to get started. Please like and share, give some people some time to get on before we start at 1030. To think of anyone, just give them a tag in the video. Hope everyone had a good day today and is blessed if you're on here and you're listening to this and you're on with us and you're going to read God's word with us. You're blessed because God has kept you all the way up until this day, to this time. And we are thankful and I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful that you're here. Thankful that you met me here. I think that I'm able to speak with you and talk with you. And um, God has watched over and kept me all day through my travels and through my, um, who was a great, great, what's going on, sis? Thanks for getting on. Mr. Kiwana, food was amazing. Yeah, I know. There's great food down there. Never steer you wrong. What's going on, Brother Chink? Happy to see you uh, that are up and still lively after that loss on Saturday. To God be the glory. Let's like and share. You got get your Bible out. Read God's word with me, bro. I appreciate you. Um, like and share this video with someone. Tag someone in the video. We are live. On Facebook and YouTube today, um, it is Monday, January the 23rd, and God is good. And it is 1030, and it is time for Late Night with the Word. So I appreciate you all getting on. 
And it is time for us to read God's word for our life and finish our night off with God's word. God has been good to us and good to me all day, right? Good to me all day. I can only speak for myself, but he has kept me um, all day long. He has uh, had his heads of protection around me and my, my family. Um, I haven't gotten any bad reports and in, in anything like that today. God has just been faithful and I'm thankful I'm, I'm thankful for the opportunity to get on here once again um, one more night and read God's word with you what's going on cousin Stacy thanks for getting on I appreciate you um and read God's word with you for you hey Aunt Linda thanks for getting on now uh, please like and share our video um, on YouTube um and on facebook we just want to share god's word god is good we had last time we were here we were doing bible story friday and we were in exodus and reading about um the exodus of the children of israel from egypt and that was a good time and now uh, god kept us all weekend and um, we had a wonderful time in the lord on sunday we had a good day. I had a good day at work today. Work day had some pretty long meetings, but um, to God be the glory, it worked out. And I'm happy that I got through and he kept me up until this time so that we can meet here and read God's word. So if you have your Bible, we'll get your Bible and hope you read along with me. Good evening, cousin Angie. I appreciate you. Let's say, everyone who gets on, please like and share. Say hi when you get in. Let me know that you're here and following with us. Get your Bible more importantly so we can read God's word together. We have a scripture in Luke. We've been reading in Luke. And we are going to continue in there. Our arming word for today is compassion. Our word for today is compassion. What's going on, Sister B? What's going on, Sister Latoya? I appreciate y'all supporting, staying up late with me. Our, but our word today is compassion. And the reference scripture for the word compassion and us as believers and what it means to us to have compassion. The word says in Zechariah, the seventh chapter, verses nine and 10. As thus says the Lord of hosts, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another, do not oppress the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, or the poor, and let no and let none of you devise evil against any of against another in your heart. That is what the word says about compassion hey what's going on sister Kara? appreciate you getting on zachariah the seventh chapter verse nine through ten we must be and render true judgment amen show kindness and mercy to one another those who have lost a widow a woman who's lost her husband who's out on her own the fatherless the sojourner which means those immigrants those who uh, seek a, a, a better land from another country, the foreigners, the poor, we are not supposed to divide, devise evil against another in our heart. These are the things that we must do in order to show compassion. So if you need a reference scripture in, re, in regards to why you should show compassion as a believer, and what compassion means as a believer, you can use Zechariah, the seventh chapter, as a reference. In verse nine, God's word is true and it's good for your life. You are now stronger because you know more about what God has for you in regards to compassion. And if you exercise that in your life, God will be pleased with you. Amen. We must do what God has commanded us to do. And that show compassion for one another, amen, and love one another. So let's open with prayer, and then we're going to read our scripture for today, which is Luke, the fourth chapter. I hope you have your Bible. 
and get your Bible out, read along with us. Um, I appreciate everyone getting on, like and share. This is Late Night with the Word, where we end our night with God's Word. And we are reading tonight, Luke, the fourth chapter. God has been good. and He is worthy to be praised. We're going to give him a couple minutes tonight. And we've been reading Luke and about um, another um, account of Jesus' life and ministry. Um, again, if you are familiar with Late Night with the Word, you know we finished through Matthew. And Matthew's account of Jesus's life and ministry. So a lot of the things we hear in Luke will sound similar, um, but they will have a different viewpoint for us, uh, more information for us to live, to live by, to learn, amen, and to know what Jesus did for us. So let's open with some prayer and then we'll read. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for waking us up and keeping us all the way up until this time, God, we thank you, God, for this, your son, Jesus Christ, God, we thank you for your love, God, we thank you for um, teaching us, God, and imparting your ways to us, God, allow us to um, be not only hearers of your words, but doers of your word, God, allow us to show compassion and kindness for one another, God, and be obedient to your word, God, conform in our life so that we may be pleasing to you, God. God, I ask that you give us godly understanding to your word. Open our hearts and eyes to what you will have us see and hear today, God. God, for we know your word is true and alive, God, and able to correct anything in us, God, and to, to work in us, God, what needs to be worked out, God. So we thank you, and we ask that you just continue to just be with us as we go on about this reading. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen, amen. So God bless you all. Thanks for getting on. Continue to like and share. We're going to continue. We're going to start reading the uh, Luke. We have been in Luke for the last couple of days here. We're in Luke fourth chapter, first part of Luke about the birth and the baptism of Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus is birth foretold. Uh, Mary um, having Jesus. Uh, the birth of Jesus, the shepherds and the angels. Uh, we, we, we hear about Jesus going into the temple as a young boy and teaching in the temple. Uh, we hear that he is back in Nazareth and living with his family. Um, we learn about Jesus being lost and left behind. He was like a home alone kid. Before there was home alone, his parents went on to another city and left him in the city all by himself. And when they found him, he was teaching in the temple. And then we see where he goes and he grows up. They find him, they raise him up, and he um, is submissive to his parents. He uh, Then when he's older and ready to start his ministry, he goes and meets his cousin, John the Baptist, and is baptized and receives the Holy Spirit. And a voice from heaven indicates that this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Now we are on Luke, the fourth chapter, to continue the story. Amen. Jesus has just been baptized. And we're going to continue to find out what happens next. So if you have your Bible out, please read along. We are about to read Luke, the fourth chapter. Amen. Luke. Chapter 4, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, to you, I will give all this authority in their glory, for it has been delivered to me. And I will 
and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will be it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest your strike, you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, It is said, you should not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And a report about him went out through all the surrounding country. He, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set the liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And all and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? And he said to them, doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did in Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, truly, I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the day of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them but to Zephyrah, or Zephyrah in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When he heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they can throw him down a cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. And he went down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his words possessed authority. And in the synagogue, there was a man with the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you do? What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For what authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place and into their surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. 
Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and he appealed, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve him, serve them. Now, when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns as well. For I was sent for this purpose, and he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of God's word. We just read Luke, the fourth chapter, amen, and in the life of Jesus Christ, we see after he was baptized, he was led out in the wilderness for 40 days, and being tempted by the devil for 40 days, the, attempt, the devil tempted him all these ways but jesus stood on the word of god and we see that even the devil knew the word and tried to use god or he tried to use the word to get jesus to be um disobedient and to uh throw himself off the pinnacle or the top of the temple and 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 jesus was like you should not test the lord your god you should not put the lord your god to a test although the word is true, what the you know is concerning the angels, but we are not to test God. We are not to pick our Lord God to the test. That's what the word tells us. And then after Jesus is tempted in the wilderness for 40 days, he is led out of the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. And this is really important because everything that Jesus did was led by the Spirit. He was led out for fasting by the spirit for 40 days and he was led to his ministry by the spirit after he went through his fasting and temptation you have to go through something in order to um, really be effective in a ministry for christ we have to be able to put things aside and suffer through something the lord suffered through temptation and through hunger and through pains of the human experience and he also suffered through the temptations of um, Satan through his weakest moments, but yet he stood on the promises and the word of God, and he was still faithful unto God, and he started his ministry through the Spirit, amen, and he was led to go back to his hometown, Nazareth, and here he's teaching in Nazareth, and he goes and he reads in the temple, and they are marveled by Jesus' knowledge and his uh, authority in which he speaks of the word, but they have no respect for him because they only see him as Joseph's son, and they could not um, get past him being Joseph's little boy or Joseph's son. So they sought to do him harm because of the things that he was saying. He couldn't be Joseph's little boy who was the Messiah. It couldn't be the little son, the little boy that ran around here and the carpenter's son, you know, and they sought to throw him and he said off a cliff, but Jesus was able to escape that and continue with his ministry and proceed with his ministry. And he went that day down into the city of Galilee, Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he, and he cast out unclean demons. He healed the sick and he did good by many in that area and in that way he also healed his sight his disciple simon peter the mother-in-law who had a high fever amen and he cast out more demons and continued to teach more in the synagogue so jesus basically did nothing to anyone taught the truth they rejected the truth instead of being angry he went on about doing god's work and doing god's will he escaped with their wrath. He left his hometown. 
there's no respect for a prophet in their hometown. They couldn't get past him being what they thought he should be, right? They they only thought he was just Joseph's little son. Is this not Joseph's son? That's what they called him. They didn't recognize him as Jesus, the son of the living God, the man who was teaching them and marveling, but they only saw him as Joseph's son. So he had to move on. He told them there was no, pretty much, you know, that no prophet gets any respect in their own hometown. He can't go in there and they will never accept him because of how they see him and what they think he is. You know, sometimes we have to move off of, of certain things and out of certain places because of how people automatically think they know us. They think they know who we are, what we're going to be, what we should be right, who we are, what, who we're going to be. And when God tries to do something different in us and tries to use us, some people can't accept that. And the Bible is just telling us even more so when you, where you come from. You know, sometimes you got to leave Harrisburg. Sometimes you got to leave certain places and go certain areas or wherever you're from right? to be effective in your ministry that God has called you to be in and be effective in. But you just have to be led as Jesus is, led by the Spirit. So then he goes and he's being Jesus. He's doing what Jesus do. Heal the sick, love people, right? Heal the sick, treat people, teach people, show people the truth, right? He says he's here to open. He says, um, the spirit is, of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. This is what he's doing. He has sent me to proclaim liberties to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind. The, the physical blind and the spiritually blind and to set liberty to those who are oppressed. You're oppressed in your sin. There is liberty in Jesus Christ. You don't have to be slave to sin anymore. You could be free in Jesus. Amen. You just have to accept his teaching, his word, perform your life through the Holy Spirit, be led by the Spirit, and allow God to use you because your life is no longer your own, but it is hidden and secured in Christ. So those was that was Luke, the fourth chapter. I thank God for that. It was a good chapter, good scripture, and good information, and good reading for our life. I thank God for you all. I appreciate you getting on. I appreciate you and your support. I hope you were able to listen and to read God's word tonight for your life. I hope your life is blessed. Um, Lord's will, we will read again tomorrow. Um, a scripture that God has given us, which will be Luke, the fifth chapter, if God sees fit, or if he has something different, we will read whatever he gives us to read. But I know that God is, he sees us to this point again tomorrow. He will meet us here. He is faithful. He loves you. I love you. Good night. I thank God for you. And I appreciate your support. I appreciate you reading God's word with me tonight. And Lord's will, I will see you tomorrow. All right, God bless and good night. Peace.